Six weeks after the launch of Gemini 9, a simultaneous countdown of two spacecraft was underway on July 18, 1966, at Cape Kennedy. The final countdown of the Atlas Agena and Gemini 10 takes approximately 11 hours of integrated operations. It involves such major areas as the crew, space vehicles, control centers, tracking network, and recovery support. And on this launch day, the count was the smoothest experience in the Gemini program. There were no holes. At 39 minutes and 46 seconds after 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, the Atlas Agena lifted off. Astronaut John Young, command pilot of Gemini 10, and pilot Michael Collins now had an orbiting target for their primary objective of rendezvous and docking. The Gemini launch vehicle had a 35-second launch window. It must launch within 35 seconds of the planned time today in order to meet the mission or be scrubbed. At the very start of that launch window, at 5.20 and 27 seconds in the afternoon, right on the nose, Gemini 10 lifted from launch pad 19. From the start, it looked like a good launch. The clock did start. Mike Collins reporting the pitch program has started. Doctors at the Aero Medical Console noted that the heartbeat of this crew was the lowest of any mission. Surgeon reports the crew looks fine to them. George Cooper advises the crew they're looking mighty good. We have the proper roll of pitch programs in, and both guidance systems are go. And the crew has been given a go for staging. certainly lower than that of many watching the launch. Gemini 10 was inserted into an orbit of 145 by 87 nautical miles. We had our second good orbit. And Young says we look good. They're leaving the second stage. As Gemini 10 began its first revolution over the Bermuda tracking station, it had two target vehicles ahead of it and three days of work. In addition to Agena 10, Agena 8, which had been launched four months earlier, was in an orbit of 217 by 215 nautical miles. Lights were burning in the mission control room at the manned spacecraft center as Command Pilot Young began his maneuvers for rendezvous. Rendezvous was scheduled to occur on the fourth revolution over the South Atlantic when the crew would be between tracking stations. Spacecraft communicator Gordon Cooper raised Gemini 10 over Madagascar. Gemini 10, what is your status? Are you there yet? We're there, replied Command Pilot Young. After a while, astronaut Cooper put the next question. What is your range now? Our range is about 40 feet. Neither Command Pilot nor his pilot had much to say on this occasion, nor would they grow more expansive later in the flight. You asked the questions, they replied, and went on flying the mission. This flight film was shot at 6 frames per second and projected at 24 frames. Because of the position of the camera in the spacecraft, the screen image is inverted. The crew received a go for docking from the coastal sentry Quebec, a tracking ship stationed between the Philippines and Japan. With small thrust increases, Command Pilot Young nudges the nose of Gemini forward. He's docked. 
docking occurred in the Western Pacific. It was reported to Hawaii at five hours and 59 minutes ground elapsed time. The primary objective of the mission has been accomplished. At the end of the first day, a burn of 420 feet per second was made using the primary propulsion system, PTS, of the Agena. It raised the orbit of the dock vehicles to a new record, 414 by 160 nautical miles. The flight plan for the rest of the mission underwent revisions. On the second mission day, the command pilot performed two more Agena PPS burns to lower his orbit slightly below that of Agena 8. This was followed by the first of three extravehicular activities. It was a stand-up EVA by Pilot Collins to obtain still photography of selected star groups for astronomical study. Unfortunately, no motion picture film of this or subsequent extravehicular activities was obtained. At 44 hours and 40 minutes, Command Pilot Young undocked from Agena 10. Two revolutions later, the 30th, Gemini 10 reported that they were station keeping with Agena 8. This rendezvous was achieved with a passive target by optical means and backup ground computations. After rendezvous, pilot Collins left his spacecraft for a second EVA. He retrieved a micrometeorite collection device from Agena 8. Flight Director Lunny ended the EVA after 36 minutes, two-thirds of the planned time. The objective was to save propellant scheduled for final orbital changes and retrofire preparation. A third EVA was performed to jettison equipment no longer needed. And then Dr. Berry, the flight surgeon, scheduled a 10-hour sleep period for the crew. As retrofire preparations came up on the final day, Command Pilot Young reflected briefly, I hate to come Dr. back. Golden, our retro fire officer, will also be a three-way countdown to retrofire between crew, spacecraft communicator, and the retro fire officer five, began over Canton four, Island. Seventy three, hours, two, ten minutes. One retro fire. The rockets fire sequentially and impart a velocity change of some 320 feet per second to the orbit. This will bring the crew in. They were headed for the prime recovery area in the Atlantic, where the USS Guadalcanal waited. Gemini 10 re-entered the atmosphere, and the onboard camera gives a brief view of the long descent. This is Houston. The backup command pilot, Al Bean, advises that uh, John Young does plan to try to get some movies out the window during his fire re-entry across the states. His path of flight will take him uh, across the lower, lower part of Texas. He'll skirt the Gulf Coast across the Florida Peninsula at approximately the Cape and land at a point 460 nautical miles due east of the Cape. They should have a drug shootout, although they have not confirmed this orally. As recovery forces watched, Gemini 10 was sighted. It was lowered slowly over the water by the large main parachute. We had splashed down and it looked to us like... Rescue helicopters hovered about, and the crew of the Guadalcanal was ready for recovery. Early data indicates that Gemini 10 landed less than five nautical miles from the planned impact point. Experienced rescue swimmers were in the water quickly, attaching the flotation collar to the spacecraft. The crew elected to be picked up by helicopter. Father Collins was the first to be hoisted up. From the deck of the Guadalcanal, we're advised the band on board has struck up a tune. It's a big, wide, wonderful world. Welcome aboard the Guadalcanal in traditional fashion. Astronauts Young and Collins had concluded a flight of three work-filled days. Gemini 10 accomplished its primary objective, rendezvous and docking. In addition, eight out of nine secondary objectives were fully or partially completed. Among the first logged in the records of space flight were the first dual rendezvous. This was achieved with both an active and a passive target. 
the first use of a target vehicle for maneuvering thrust. This is a primary technique of the manned lunar mission. The first retrieval of equipment from another orbiting object. And the first time three extravehicular activities had been performed. Gemini 10 also reached the highest altitude of any manned spacecraft, 414 nautical miles. In the words of its program manager, Charles Matthews, Gemini had fully matured and become operational.